You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. Welcome back to the show. I'm now joined in studio by Sean Stafford of Stafford Bakeries. Good morning, Sean, and thank you very much for joining me this morning. Morning, Carl. Delighted to be here. Sean, you might start by telling me a little bit about the background to Stafford Bakeries, please. Uh, Stafford Bakeries was started in 1955 when my father came to Gorey. Um, he moved into a small bakery, put a couple of vans on the road, selling bread around the greater Gorey area, for the want of a better word. Um, sometime afterwards, shortly afterwards, he bought a small supermarket at 38 Main Street. He saw it as a good outlet for his product and also there was an opening for a grocery shop in Gorey. Some years later, he opened a coffee shop in Arklow and then again a second supermarket in Ennis And in 1979 opened, I suppose, his flagship supermarket. It was a super value in Main Street, Gorey. So from humble beginnings, starting off as a one-man band with his own bakery, within a number of years he grew it into a large, quite a large bakery and having his own super value supermarket in Gorey as well. What led him into the supermarket business and being trained and qualified as a baker? I suppose I'm not 100% sure on that one, but he saw it as a great shop window for his breads and his products and a way of developing long term. I think he was always a baker, like myself, but... He saw the supermarket. Transport was more difficult at the time. It would have been harder to get breads further afield. So he needed more than a bakery. But it was also, like I say, a really good shop window for selling his product. And in the supermarkets, he had a coffee shop, probably one of the first supermarkets in the country to do so, where he would have cakes and after doing their shopping, women could come in, sit down, have a tea and a coffee. You went to the UK yourself to be trained as a baker. Tell me a little bit about that. Um. I did my leaving cert in 1980 and I went to London September 1980, I was 17. Um, went to the National Bakery School, was considered the top bakery school in the UK, based in London. Um, great two and a half years over there. It was more than a bakery course, it was, I suppose, what they call it now is a business course with a strong emphasis on baking. But it was a good time, wouldn't have minded staying a bit longer, but business, I got to baking home, so that's when it started. Okay, so you came back in 1982 to take over the overall management of the business itself. Uh, What did you do in relation to changing the structure and the direction of the business at that stage? I never really saw myself in the supermarket game. I was trained as a baker and I wanted to develop a bakery business. So I suppose from day one in my head was, I said to myself, what do I do to get out of the supermarket game and start working to my strengths? I felt my strengths were in the bakery business. Okay, so what did you do? Um, I don't know whether it was divine inter- intervention or what, but a man called Des Pettit came along and we did a deal with Des. We sold our super value site in Gorey to him and we moved to a new bakery, which is behind Joanne, which was behind jo- where Joanne's is now, formerly Finn's Garage in Gorey. Um, I suppose it was a deal made in heaven for both parties. They started to buy our breads and we got into all the petits. At the time he had three or four supermarkets and he's since expanded. And I feel when we got out of the supermarket game, it opened up more supermarkets. We weren't no longer in competition with supermarket people. So we started to gradually get our breads out to Gorey, to Enniscarty, to Wexford. And it started from there really. I'm wondering, Sean, that you know, when you made the decision to exit the supermarket business, why at that stage you didn't decide to exit the cafe business as well? Well, I suppose the cafe business is much more closely related to our core business, bakery business. Um, originally, we now have three Joannes, one in Gorey, one in Arklow, and one in Wexford. At certain stages through their development, we actually baked bread on the premises, in the shops. Um, we had full bakeries in three of the shops at w- over a certain time. And this was again before part-baked bread became the norm. Um, we stayed in it as I saw it, I suppose, like the supermarket ba- business in our earlier years, I saw the restaurant business as a place for us to show our breads and our confectionery. Shopkeepers would come in, 
restaurant other restaurant owners would come in and see product and would look to buy it off us. And also there was a huge rise in people going to work and going out for lunch. People got away from bringing their sandwiches to lunch and I saw an opportunity where people would come in and get fresh food with our sandwiches and rolls with our breads. It was promotion all the way really. Sean, a major development happened within your own trade in the 90s with the onslaught of imported bread, especially from France. What did you do within your own business to compete against that? Um, I suppose the bakery trade was doing very well in the early 90s. People were travelling abroad more and saw trends from Europe. Um, the big threat to us was part baked bread was starting to be imported. Part baked bread basically is where the baker provides bread to the shop that is part baked and the, the shopkeeper finishes the bread by baking it for a period roughly eight minutes. It's your baguettes, your Parisians, your petty pans that are roll off the tongue now. In those days the threat was they were going to replace the baker's bread roll which had a short shelf life. By having a part baked the shopkeeper could bake it as he needed it during the day. Um, I saw this personally as a huge challenge and I decided we needed to get part of the action. So in 1995, um, we moved to a new custom-built site, and we were the first manufacturer of part-baked frozen bread in the country. Your business is a huge logistics business. You have 250 people employed across County Wexford, 30 trucks on the road. How do you manage that? With great difficulty at times. But um, no, we have some very good people working for us. A lot of them are with us a long time and they have a lot of experience. I think in any business experience is key to success and we've gone through some very difficult times in the country and I think without experience and without being able to change, become more competitive, I think we'd be in big trouble. And from a technological perspective, how important is automation in your business today? Automation is huge. To survive we have to be efficient. Costs have gone up unfortunately a lot of fixed costs but prices have come down and they've had to come down if we weren't efficient we wouldn't be there people now have less money in their pocket and they're looking for value and how price competitive is the market today very price competitive people will treat themselves if they like a product they will pay a little bit more but especially i would think the confectionery business is very very competitive one of the major challenges for your own business over the years, Sean, must have been the product shelf life for bread, you know, only a number of days in some cases. Surely the part baked frozen bread has helped you overcome that particular area? Yeah, well, I suppose the bakery game, you're talking about days shelf life. Some of our products would only have hours shelf life. A lot of morning goods, bread rolls and that, if you think the French, they buy bread at least twice a day, sometimes three times a day, park baked bread and park baked products are allowing us to get the product to the customer. Sometimes they're still hot in the shop when they pick them up. The key is to make sure that the quality is as good as the, tradi as the traditional baked breads. With the bad harvest last year, Sean, that must have put the price of flour up. What type of an impact did that have on your business? Um, apart from putting the price of flour up, which obviously causes pressure of its own, when you get a bad harvest, flour quality drops. And I suppose when I say it drops, it can become inconsistent. And really, people talk about automation and talk about plant and equipment. When this happens, you're very reliant again on experience, experienced staff, experienced bakers. We like to think in Staffords, and while we've developed, we've developed because we've great staff. We've developed some of those staff, but experience, like the bad harvest, if we don't have bakers, we are in trouble. You get a bad lot of flour, one lot of flour differs from the next, water absorption changes, so your doughs become totally inconsistent. You have to have experience, you have to have experienced bakers who can see this and rectify it, otherwise your bread quality is gone. From speaking to you, Sean, it certainly sounds like the two keys to the success behind Stafford's Bakeries has been, number one, your staff and the experience behind them, and number two, product development. Would that be right? Yeah, and I suppose the third one, a very important one, is the support we've received from shopkeepers, obviously, and from people across the country. I see our business developed 
really we started in Wexford and it developed to Carlo and that and a huge thing for us as well was go, Wexford people going to Dublin but also Dublin people coming to Wexford on holidays because we were able to showcase our products in the Wexford supermarkets they got it on holidays and they would ask for it further afield and really Dublin is a huge part of our market now it's a huge part of anyone in Ireland's market because a third of the population are there any morning now we could have 12 or 14 trucks in Dublin and really that development came from a small beginning where we controlled our product and it was on show in local shops and people wanted it. The growth itself, you've grown the business over the last 58 years to 250 staff almost organically. Uh, what's in store for the next five years, let's say? Just let's look down the lens for the next five years. Where do you see the growth coming from? Um, well, we're building a new bakery at the moment. I would see a large part of our development would be in the frozen market. Um, a lot of bread is still imported into Ireland, believe it or not. A lot of frozen breads are imported container loads every week. We have plans, we have new equipment bought, we'll move into a new bakery in May. We'll have three automated lines in it and I would see that we would go about replacing a lot of breads coming from Germany, Belgium, France and such places and if we can get the support we've got in the past, if we can provide, which we will do, a quality product and hopefully at a better price. Um, I would see that's where our development is. Last week, Sean, Stafford Bakeries picked up an award at the Gorey Business Awards for the greatest contribution to business in North Wexford. What did that mean for the business? Look, at it was a huge award to win and we were very grateful to get it. Everyone needs recognition, likes recognition. Um, when you a business award for a contribution to North Wexford, North Wexford is where we started. Um, we we feel we're part of the community up there. We've we've received great support up there, and obviously, people like to be recognised in their own hometown. People say that sometimes it's easier to be recognised further afield, but to get the award meant a huge amount to us. It made my self and my family very proud. There's nothing, certainly nothing competes with uh, receiving recognition from your own peers in your own locality. Uh, my final question for you, Sean, you know, you're a busy man, you're running a, a huge business with 250 staff. Tell me about a typical day for you. Um, God, a typical day. I normally find myself in work by 6.30. Um, I, I never know at that stage, I suppose, what the day is going to throw at me, but it has become easier dare I say it over the last couple of years because we can now we have people in place we have very good people in place but my normal day I suppose I start work about 6.30 and I get home about 7.30 in the evening um, other than that I'd obviously I have five kids and a wife at home um, without the wife looking after the kids I couldn't give that sort of time to a business but um, my typical Monday to Friday is I start at half six, finish around 7, 7.30, and I have a bit of leisure activity after that. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance.